we started a company about 15 years ago called Ocean Grow. And what we do is we provide mineral uh, supplements to agriculture industry. And, uh, and about 10 years ago to animal nutritionists and also we know from feedback from customers that um, they also use it for human nutrition. Although we, we can't recommend it because we'd be shut down pretty quick. FDA wouldn't like it too well. Um, and just to say, the way uh, Paul and I met, we just met for the first time this morning. We've talked on the phone once. Uh, Patty Foley uh, is our office manager, and she's been a raw food uh, addict for about 26 or 7 years. Hasn't cooked a thing. And just to get a sense of you know, the, you know, who I'm speaking to, how many are 100% are raw? 50%. 25. All right, all right. And anybody grow their own food? Okay, okay. Um, and in, to somebody that's raw, if I could just ask a question. By the way, I'm going to leave plenty of time uh, toward the end for questions. And uh, is Paul in the room? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, I definitely will leave. Talk about it? Huh? Are you going to talk? Yeah, that's about right. It? That's right. No, I just wanted to know. Uh, I I will leave plenty of time for questions. I'm sure there will be some. And of the 100% raw people, who? What's the primary reason? I'm just curious why, the primary reason. There was one hundred percenter, right? No? How about a 50 percenter? Yeah. Why, why do you eat raw? Okay, but it, any specific technical reason? <laughs> By the way, health, health is, I, I accept that answer. I mean, health is, a, is obviously a great reason. Okay, okay. Well, that's a great, that's a great entry point, and um, uh, I don't know how much you know about agriculture or about growing food, but I, I just want to read you something, which is probably. And by the way, these things go all kind of wacky directions. I, I don't I don't do a, I do a lot of presentations, but I don't do them from a script. It just depends who the audience is, and and but I want to read you this. We we made a. This is something that hangs in every fertilizer distributor company building in the US. Ammonium nitrate alert. Do not sell ammonium nitrate to anyone who wants to pay in cash, does not want to give any personal information, address, phone number, etc. Does not want the product delivered but wants to haul it themselves. Acts nervous during the purchase. Is a new customer or is unknown to the local branch. And lastly, does not know anything about the turf and ornamental industry or fertilization in general. The reason they do this is because a nitrate bomb is what took the Edward R. Murrow building down. And if you look at all the other things that we use for fertilizing plants, it's nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. Tremendously volatile compounds. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not putting it down because the, the father of modern agriculture was a guy named Justice von Liebig. And he lived back in the middle 1800s. And what he did is he did tissue tests. And he said, look, you do tissue tests of a leaf. And what you see is that leaves have nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. And they're primary elements. They're there in large quantities. So he said, look, we have all these incendiary compound, we're between wars, we have all these stockpiles, let's go ahead and use that. So that's, that's how modern agriculture was born, NP and K. And, and if you look on the fertilizer bag, the three numbers you see, like 10, 10, 10, or 0, 6, 6, whatever it is, that's the percentage of available nitrogen, potassium, or phosphorus. And what's interesting is that it doesn't make good food. You know, it can make a lot of food, uh, but, but even the people that are farmers know that as, as the years go by, yields decline. And they're always fighting this problem. You know, they're putting back 
nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus, but the yields continue to decline. So then you get Monsanto's of the world and, and other seed companies that are into GMO because they're always looking for disease resistance and yield. And if you talk to farmers, and, and by the way, even organic farmers, you talk to organic farmers, at the end of the day, because it's a business and they're trying to survive, they actually they can't care a lot about the quality of the food they make. It's pretty sad. I mean, literally, I've been on a lot of organic farms all over the country, and I said, don't you want to make better food? Not really interested. You know, their yields are good, their costs are good, off they go, they have a business. So believe it or not, not a lot of care. Oh God, I forgot to take off my shoes. I'm an electrical engineer. That's the first thing. By the way, best floor ever to have in a house. Not, not just concrete, even concrete. This is terrazzo, which is you know, a form of concrete. And it grounds you. And you know, it's, it's wonderful to be, that's, that's another thing. Uh, wonderful to be grounded, and uh, um, it, it's helping already. I can feel it. Okay, I, I just wanted to read you a quote, too. And uh, it's interesting where it comes from. And then we'll get into the subject. I really don't know why it is that all of us are so committed to this sea, except I think it's because, in addition to the fact that the sea changes and the light changes and ships change, it's because we all came from the sea. We won't get religious about this yet. And it is an interesting biological fact that all of us have in our veins the exact same percentage of salts in our blood that exist in the ocean. And therefore, we have salt in our blood, in our sweat, in our tears, if you ever wondered. We are tied to the ocean. And when we go back to the sea, whether it is to sail or to watch it, we are going back from whence we came. John F. Kennedy, Jr. Sorry, John F. Kennedy, not Jr., the president. And if you don't know this, your, your blood is almost identical to seawater in the sense of, uh, let's see, yeah, here it is. Everybody who took high school chemistry remembers this guy. This is all the natural elements in the universe and some of the man-made elements that occur other places like stars for microseconds or picoseconds or some short period of time. But if, if you look at human blood, human blood is, by the way, everybody thinks seawater is sodium chloride. You know, it tastes salty. But actually most of the, 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 the middle of this chart are actually considered salts, earth salts, okay, not just sodium chloride. And if you look at the, and by the way, we're not going to get educational terribly, don't worry. But anyways, if you look at human blood, it has all these elements in this proportion, in this order. Okay? Same as seawater, except seawater is sodium-based. Human blood is iron-based because it, you know, have to, it has to be able to carry oxygen. So now you look at chlorophyll, and chlorophyll, same order, same proportion, if the soil is good, okay, so a perfect soil, this is what chlorophyll in a plant has, except it's not sodium-based, it's not iron-based, it's magnesium-based. So very interesting thing, and, um, and I, I just, before we get into the, the, the science of this uh, and how important minerals are, remember minerals make up everything, sheetrock, paint, Plastic, me, photographs, bottles, glass, silicon. It's silicon. Okay? Everything is made up of, this is it. This is the blueprint to the universe in terms of building blocks. These are the building blocks of everything. That's how important they are. And um, the, the way I got into this briefly is that i uh, very interested in nutrition all my life. And, you know, went to health seminars and, and just like this. And there was a doctor, strangely enough, not far from here, because at the time I was in New York City, uh, lives up the road in Jensen Beach. And he talked about a fellow named Dr. Murray, who passed away in 1983. 
and lived in the, you know, went to school in the 30s. He was a double doctor, uh, internal medicine, and uh, uh, ear, nose, and throat doctor. And, um, and he researched, he, he had a kind of a mind that just was interested in everything. And when he was doing his residency at Massachusetts General, uh, he, you know, he'd get out at 12 o'clock at night. He'd work 12 hour shifts. He was stressed out. He was, you know, his mind was going a mile a minute and he would just go out and walk in downtown Boston. And one time he came across a fisherman who had been fishing the Grand Banks off way off the coast of, of New England. And he said, look, all day long, I deal with sick people. I deal with hypertension, tumors, cancers, maladies of all kind. He said, what do fish get? And the fisherman didn't wait a second. He said, never seen a sick fish. I've been fishing 40 years, and in the open deep ocean, there's no such thing as a sick fish. And, you know, if you're a science guy or, you know, you have an inquiring mind, you're going to go, that's weird. Terrestrial, everything terrestrial is sick. Animals, freshwater fish, you cut open a freshwater fish, and you're going to find weird stuff. They all have something wrong with them. But if you go to the open ocean, nothing is sick. Everything is perfectly healthy. And he started to research it, and he said, oh my God, seawater is not just sodium chloride. Seawater has all the periodic chart elements in it. In a certain proportion, fish are swimming in their pharmacopoeia. That's what they're in. And what, what governs their lifespan is no longer, you know, you know, everybody thinks we, you know, we, we're living a long time if we're living to be 90 or 80. You know, we're, we're designed to be 